welcome to All Hands on Deck. Today I have the privilege to have an amazing guest on the platform. Her name is Nikki Wells. She is a singer, a songwriter, and a composer. She has been touring in the world in different places like the Opera House in Australia, like the Royal Albert Hall in London, and the Glastonbury Pyramid Stage. So Nikki, welcome to the All Hands on Deck platform and thank you for being our special guest today. Hello Virginie, thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Tell me Nikki, you have been um, performing also with Anushka Shankar to name a few and you have released those sacred Vedic hymn uh, called the Shlokas. So I'm really thrilled to listen to you as well as all our listeners today of the technique you use and your really gifted talent you can share with us today on the platform. The importance of these shlokas that you sing and also at the style of music you have been performing uh, since many, many years, even since your childhood. If you could tell us a little bit your story, how you came into this beautiful talent you have within yourself. And uh, lately I would like to ask you a few questions if you allow me. Of course, oh, absolutely, happy to. Well, I've, I guess I've always been um, a, a musical person. I guess singing has been like having a limb, an extra limb. It's always been part of my being, part of my body and part of my, my self-expression. So um, I've always been a singer and I've been so fascinated with the voice as an instrument and its capabilities. Um, so. I actually grew up in India from when I was six to ten years old, so I kind of absorbed a lot of the culture and a, a lot of the sounds from a young age. Um, and then when I was 18, I got into Indian classical music and was just uh, so bewitched by the melodies more than anything and the emotional expression within um, that style of music and for me I'm very drawn to melody so um, and that can be all in all genres and all styles of music from anywhere in the world so I when I first heard um, Indian melodies growing up I found it very hypnotic and very um, just incredibly sophisticated and uh, because you know in the West um, we're kind of limited with the amount of, of, of pitch that we use. In India, they have uh, four microtones in between one semitone, uh, meaning that it's more like an elastic band that you stretch and open up. And so you can really kind of get into, um, into depth with melody. And so I found melody from uh, the East very compelling. Uh, so I, I really started getting into it all when I was around 18, but I've always been a, a singer and I grew up with a lot of the troubadour singer-songwriters like Joni Mitchell, Randy Newman, Nick Drake, a lot of folk and, um, and then also really loved gospel uh, singing. And, um, but in terms of the um, shalokas and the more sacred sound, this is something that I, I grew up with since childhood and the reason why we went to India as children as well was to have a, a more kind of um, a holistic and spiritual experience in, in, um, in India. And so we grew up singing devotional music from a very young age. So it didn't come, um, it wasn't foreign to me. It came, it was part of my own upbringing. Oh, okay. So, uh, Nikki, I'm really pleased that you can, you know, give us some uh, advice and tools and maybe answer a few questions because, as you know, All Hands on Deck is a platform where we want to grow a community, where we can really uh, help ourselves with different techniques. And I think that this musical and inner voice uh, expression is really very important. I've been listening to your shlokas on YouTube, which are really fantastic even to sing them it just you know release an energy within us so uh, my question would be how would you help someone to find their inner voice if they don't know they are singers for instance mm -hmm. well a lot of this is about workshopping and having a go um 
it's a bit like if you take paint and you just throw it on a canvas and you make a mess you know so it's about it's about trying and it's about doing it um you can't really you have to you have to play music you know it's not something that you do you have to play so that means there's an element of of doing and playing and experimenting and in terms of of helping someone find their own voice what what i do is is with whoever the client is or whether it's in a group is we we workshop going into um sometimes even pushing out of boundaries to find some quite uncomfortable zones and then come back to the center where you can find your full self expression and whether that's it, it could even be doing things like theater workshops that that allow one to kind of um move out of their comfort zone in order to express more you see so um what we do is we explore the vocal range we explore the 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 full capacity of one's um vocal potential and then they it unlocks a whole realization within them about their own capacities and um and then it's we go through a kind of cathartic journey um to then release a lot of emotion that is trapped in the body so sometimes with the voice you can express a lot of um residual or repressed emotions that are stored in the mind and in the body and with the voice we kind of vibrate it out of the body so then there is this kind of cathartic release of um tensions and of emotions oh uh, so what is the importance does it give more self confidence and self esteem i guess because as you said we don't become a, a painter a writer or a singer uh, out of the night uh, it's something that uh, someone like you professional can trigger uh, during a workshop or a retreat mm -hmm. so um yeah yeah in a in a workshop setting you're in a safe environment to uh, experiment express and play and a lot of the time in our own lives we are in our kind of maybe structured lives or structured routines but you're not necessarily able to be like your 8 year old self where you were able to just you know do somersaults and play in the playground and and so what we do in a workshop setting is create a safe environment to explore your voice and uh and a lot of that ends in a more meditative way whereby you you end up having probably a more spiritual um experience or a meditative experience with your voice and how your voice can be a means of self healing so you can for example um i can teach various um sacred hymns for example that resonate with particular energy centers in the body and if someone has a maybe an ailment or a particular focus on um on a on a particular center you can actually learn that him and and nourish yourself with it and uh, and use your voice to kind of uh, heal you know i was when i was listening to your shlokas there is few of them because you have different sacred sound uh, depending on which uh, energy center you work within ourselves and even by singing it i you could feel such an energy of of as you said healing parts you know uh, mm -hmm. so i think it's really something that we should not neglect the music the sound as we say is a universal language and i think we have a lot to learn from the vedic uh, knowledge of of sacred sound uh, coming mostly mm -hmm. from india mm -hmm. well it's it's essentially like medicine music uh there's there's uh, you know music has many different um you know it's it's been made for certain ways some people create music for entertainment some people create music um for there there can be music for ascent and then also music for descent in the in terms of where your consciousness goes you can listen to some music and it might make you feel uh it might trigger your ego and you feel really kind of you know you want to drive faster and you want to feel cool or or there's music that can can make your temperament um more like a calm lake so you know music has so many different ways of triggering emotions within us with this particular kind of music it's about going within so it's it's very much about uh healing 
um, you know, the, the inmost um, uh, depth of our energy centers within and, and going through the process of unraveling um, yourself to actually be opened out like a flower. So if all of these energy centers are like flowers, they all have to have their own time to really open and then express their qualities in the same way that we need to take time to, to really allow ourselves to be, to, to unleash our full potential so we can be a very uh, fully open and expressing flower that just gives fragrance to, to the world and to everyone's lives. Oh, well, this is absolutely what you do and it's really wonderful. I really uh, uh, tell you everyone, uh, do not hesitate to uh, listen to Nikki's uh, records on YouTube. She has really beautiful albums. And uh, really Nikki, it will be such a pleasure for, for me to, to have you more on the platform for different topics, even if you do some session online between, you know, until we can organize uh, physical retreats in beautiful places uh, during this pandemic. I think there is still uh, a way to, you know, spread your beautiful energy. And um, I look forward to having you on a Q&A um, live uh, chat on the platform. Listeners, uh, we will send you the link uh, where you will be able to ask your own question to Nikki. And uh, really, thank you so much, Nikki, for being uh, available and nurturing uh, all of us uh, on all hands on deck and hope oh, to see you very okay. soon and if i may you uh, may ask you a favor i would love if you have two more minutes to sing something for us for all hands on deck platform um sure um just think of, of maybe one of the shulokas or Yes, whatever comes from your heart, uh, it would be wonderful to to share today okay. your talent um, on the platform. So I will sing for, for this center, which is known as the Vishuddhi, and um, it's in praise of um, the Hindu god Krishna, who is um, the, the, the actual rag that this shloka is set in, is very melodious and colorful and uh, the shuloka represents his, um, it, it basically describes his attributes. Kasturi tilakam lala tapatale Vakshasthale kaustubham Nasagre navamotikam karatale Sarvange Hari Chandanam Sulalitam Kante Cha Mokta Ali Gopastri It's very, I mean, they're thousands of years old, so they're around 4,000 uh, years old, these particular uh, Vedic hymns. So they, they kind of act as a root, a root, um, a Sanskrit is a root language, 
and so it, it has almost a kind of primal uh, effect. We can feel that it's uh, an energy that is within us, that awakes, if I can say so, the sounds. Yeah. It's really yeah. sacred sounds. Yeah, no, it is sacred sounds, yeah. And, every and your voice is beautiful, Nika. Oh, thank you, Virginie. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. Well, each, each um, shloka has a very, has a very different uh, feeling and a different mood, which is why uh, they each have a different rag, which, is, which means mood or color uh, in, in, uh, in Sanskrit. So it's, um, they each evoke a different feeling. And that one in particular, um, has a playfulness and a na, da, na. it's got the major third and the minor third da, 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 da. so there's this happiness and sadness this longing and then this this um you know uh, excitement so wow. it creates a lot of emotions tell me a last quick question i'm sure you are a musician also yeah yes yeah, I play um, yeah, piano and guitar as well. <gasps> Fantastic. Great, Nikki. Thank you so much. And to uh, all of you listeners, thank you for being part of our community where we are putting all our gift uh, and uh, solution for a better you, for a better earth, for a better planet, for a better energy frequency on this earth nowadays where it's so needed. So thank you, Nikki, and thank see you, you soon. Huh? Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye.